Hi guys, welcome back to this plumberparts.co.uk video. Shoulders! Ah! This is a little bit of a reaction video, but also a video that I wanted to add to the B-Day series that I've been making, showing off Vitra's range of B-Days. In our very first video, asked us, how are you gonna fit a B-Day like this if you've already got an existing wall and you can't hide the concealed cistern. And what I'm gonna show you today is how you'd actually fit that to a wall. What we've got here already is our hot and cold pipe coming out, but the version of the system we're fitting today is just gonna be a cold feed one, and probably what I'm gonna fit in my house, which will be the last video. I'll be actually installing one of these in my own bathroom, because I've convinced my wife that we should definitely get a B-Day. So anyway, we're gonna start off with everything looking like this, and then we're gonna end up with it all looking like this. Fully done and absolutely beautiful. Remember, all the tools that I use in this video, you can buy on Amazon store, including these little beasts here and everything that's inside them. If you haven't done yet, please click the subscribe button, the notification, and also ding the bell as well. Anyway, let's get on with the video, guys. And remember, if there's one thing you gotta do, it's hold tight. Let's go. <laughs> Man. That is cool, isn't it? Remember, you can learn more about B-Days and the plumbing in your own home by visiting our interactive house. Hold tight. So then, first things first, I've popped these noggins in purely for the descriptive part of this video. Just imagine that this is a brick wall here. Uh, I mean, you could actually use this piece of equipment and fix it directly onto studs like you have here. But why would you do that if you could conceal the cistern and gain yourself that much toilet space, especially if you've got a small cramped bathroom, which is kind of what I've got. Let's have a look. Here's the piece here. This, this is, you're gonna love this so much. Now, I've already first fixed my hot and cold in. Now, the reason I've done hot and cold is just because I wanted to show you that you can get them in there. And if you want to put a thermostatically run and regulated B-Day in, like the wall mounted valve that we did in the previous middle B-Day video, um, you're, all you need to do is whip out this little beast here, replace that with the thermostatic valve set, and I've left the link to that below. And then once you've done that, you just connect it up like you would do the cold just here. So what I'll do in this video is we'll just show you how to do the cold side of that, and then I'll show you everything about putting the sides on, making this look nice. It's a very, very simple job, to be honest. And also for a lot of you DIY gang out there, you're gonna love it because all it is is effectively, you're gonna bolt this to the wall. You're gonna bolt this to the studding. Uh, and you haven't really got much more to do when it comes to the plumbing side of things. In this demonstration, we're only gonna show a downward waste going into a downward floor, but you can get a straight out of the back extender. So if you're going to a stack that's through a wall or you're going to a stack on the side like we've got here, which I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate for you today, you can do that. So a closer look at this beast here, we've got our flush units here, like so. We've got our on and off valve here, and all this you'll be able to get to from the front when everything's built up and all done. We're gonna be putting on a decorative fascia on this, uh, and that's held on by magnets and everything there. So that means I'm gonna be able to put a couple of valves in just down there for the hot and cold. You know what I'm like. I like a lot of valves. I like being able to valve things off and make sure that we can turn them off. And also anyone can come and turn them off if they've got a problem in the future. Um, then at the bottom, we've got exactly what we've had on the other frames. I mean, this is a bit more reinforced, so it's really sturdy. We've got our flush out and also the little clamp as well for our waste pipe. My good friend Mrs. Purb has come out to play because this is soupoip. Yeah, right, so the next stage, incredibly easy. I know where I want this to be, but what I'm gonna do is we can just lay this up here now. I and mean, this is why this is so easy. So what we'd usually have is we'd actually have first fixed our four inch down at the bottom there ready for us to go through the wall. Now, obviously we know that our four inch of this is around the back and cause I'm filming in a place with a concrete floor at the moment, I don't really fancy digging out all the concrete and uh, installing that. And it's quite actually, for a domestic situation, it's kind of quite unusual that you get that, especially on first floors. First things you want to do, uh, get yourself trusty level. We are beautiful already. What we want to do, just chuck your level down on the floor like that, all right? Don't do that. There are six main points for fixing this B-Day frame back to the wall. There are screws and washers supplied, but obviously it depends what wall substrate you're going into. Because I'm going into wood today, I'm gonna to be able to use the wood screw supplied with this B-Day. I like to use a variety of tools for this. I've currently got a 13 millimeter socket and extension on my backhoe set but I'll also use a standard socket set. It can be quite tight to get an adjustable spanner into these spaces, so make sure you've got a 13 millimeter socket set available to do this job. So for this video, we're not using the hot, 
So what I'm going to do, just for the purposes of this video, we're just going to cut the hot off and leave that just plugged back out of the way. Um, right, that is the hot, I'm sure of it. Look at those beasts, these cutters. Oh my God, every time. I just love them. Okay, in Europe, what you'd find is you have, you usually will have a valve, a special little valve, but almost looks like the one we've got at the top here, sticking out of the wall with a little bit of flange on it. But we don't really tend to do that as much in the UK. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop a valve. We're going to try and make it so it doesn't kink, but we need to get the room so we can get a valve on here. And what I would do is, is have a slotted valve on that. So there is a little trick you can do for these that stops them from kinking. You go, if you go round like that, that won't kink, that'll never kink. That's just how it is. But it's when you start trying to bend something or, or twist it round in a way that it just doesn't like it. So you can do that. It's not going to kink like that. And we're, we're happy there. So what I'm going to do, you know what? I might, I might put this at the back. That's okay. Oh, we could have it like that, couldn't we? Beautiful. All right, let's do that. So look, thumb on there. This is how we do it. As they say in E17. Was it E17 he did that? This is how we do it. Oh, the bad than me. That's always the thing in my mind. I mean, great pipe work and serviceability are the two bits that, you know, every plumber should be thinking about. That's all they should ever think about. So, let's get that bit cut there. Now, one thing I'd say, when you're doing soldering, the cleaner the joint, in a way, the quicker you can get the heat away. <laughs> so it's important, not, not just to get, a, I mean, it's obviously very important to get a nice clean joint. I mean, look how clean we've got to get that pipe. Real light flame. Get your solder wound out ready. Pop a little hook on there. And then you know, then just attempt to touch each bit that you're about to solder. So then you know you can get to it, all right? One thing we are gonna have to do before we get started on this, is just pop a heat shield at the top, like this. Also, if you've got a slant like we've got here, it'll allow the heat to rise up and away out of here when we do the solder. There you go, hopefully you've got a better view there. Cool, there we go, done. And there we go, everything's protected, everything's done. I've got my rag on the end of my bag just here. Typical old one there, look, that just went off. <laughs> just fell off, it's so annoying. Because then you have to quickly re-bend a hook while that's really hot. Uh, the fun and joy of being a plumber. Oh, I love it, it's the best. So now we can fix this on the end here. We've got a little rubber in the end of that. Make sure that well, if you've done any soldering near this or anything like that, make sure this is nice and cool by then. This bit here, you should be able to just clamp that with your hand and just tighten that up, that's now tight. We don't want to over tighten this because this is on rubber, like you've just seen, and you can over tighten rubber and damage the fitting sometimes, or, or splay the rubber out and you won't get a proper seal. So a bit of jointing compound, you can just get it on the, the end of your screwdriver if you want. And just run that. If you put a little bit of jointing compound on there, it means that they're less likely to leak uh, and they tighten up just what I call softer. So look, now let's see if we can get this in actually without having to do an over. Oh, look at that. There we go. Lovely. God, that doesn't go much better actually. Ha! <laughs> Lovely. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? So now I'm tightening up all the compression fittings, every fitting I can find. Now I'm just gonna go and turn the water on quickly and we're just gonna do a quick pressure test before we move on with the rest of the job. Right, so the water's back on. This valve is off. There we go, we're all good. Okay, and that just gives us the opportunity just to make sure that all the pipe work we've just done is okay. Yep, so all good. Ready to go on to the next stage. Here we go. Right, you ready for some magic? <laughs> this is gonna be so cool. So over there, just out of shop, we've got all the plates that we're gonna put on here, all the decorative plates ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've just got to take off these two little nuts here. And look at that, take these pieces off here. And there we go, we've got a beautiful start to our decorative fascias on this, okay? Now for most of the demonstrations I've done of these products, we've been having the waste go out of the side at the back. As I said, we can't be going down into the ground here because this is a solid concrete floor and I'm not prepared to be chopping all that out to show you that. But what I can demonstrate for you is we can just cut this off like so. And this is what you'd imagine would happen. So our four inch has been first fixed exactly where we want it. 
in a way, you can have it slightly offset because this piece here will actually offset round and you can pull this off if you want and adapt this so it can go into your four inch main waist. So that will go into the socket of standard 110 mil sockets. That's what we'll do. And then we'll pop this cleat up just here until that clicks in like that. And there we go. That's now in. And before we go too far, we have this just hanging out down here as well. Now we can re-screw on our retaining bracket, make sure it's just nice and firm, don't over tighten it. Just so that's held in place, okay? Before we put the next panel on, we just want to get these two to line up like so. I'm just going to screw this on. Right, I'm excited. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Isn't that beautiful? So you pop this on here. Get that so that's there. And just twist that round. That's locked in. So what we're doing, we're getting this little lug here to go on to, to the round on the back there. And then once we've got this popped down on the front here, we just twist this screw here and this little lug there will go under there and hold that right in. So if I just demonstrate that there, like that, you see that's gone under there. Push, push that down like so. Give that a twist. And now we're locked in. <laughs> Man! That is cool, isn't it? That's the way I want all this sort of thing to happen. And how easy is it? Oh, I need to get to something. Pull that down. <laughs> isn't it cool? Design, who does this? People have just got their heads screwed on, haven't they? Oh, well, let's get these other bits on. I'm blown away. I am blown away by that. Oh yeah, I didn't show it in this video here, but you can see it here. There's a cord that attaches as well that will stop you accidentally smashing the door on the toilet. Right, just got to do two side panels, pop them on and they'll go on with a click. Oh man, that is insane. This is mad. Just needs a bit of light persuasion. And then the top panel kind of has a little Velcro-y bit on it. Oh yeah. So for this bit, we just pop this through there like so. And then we just start doing this up. Now, if you look at it, we've actually got this bit's a different piece. So just make sure when you start this, you don't go cross thread. And then when it starts to go tight, if it goes real tight, oh, we're okay already. That's absolutely fine like that. Cool, that's on. So I think you'll agree that we are getting along with this really well. I mean, this is a very good solution for anyone who wants to fit a B-Day type toilet. I'll just be able to do that so easily on a wall. And obviously we've got all different types of surfaces. You don't just have to have a matte black one like the one we've got here. You've already seen us measure out and, and show you how to cut our waste pipes for this already. And that is in video one. There's links to all the videos in this series in the description below. Just grab my tape measure, measure up to that stuff and then you know use any kind of piece to be the the run across and just read off that so I know that I need to leave four centimeters hanging out at the back of the toilet there take the covering off on this one push this back to here four centimeters again 4.5 centimeters again I can measure that out at the back of the toilet there then I know exactly where I need to cut it it's that simple I hope you're looking forward to the song that I'm gonna sing at the end of this I'm definitely gonna do a music video get all the lights out let's go mad so 4.5. It's a very simple process doing this bit here. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my file to make sure there's a nice chamfer so we don't push out the rubber seals. But with a ruler and a bit of patience, you'll have this stage done in no time. Our next job is to prepare the B-Day connection. So we can just snip that off like that. And that's pretty much ready. <laughs> now we get our studs in for the toilet itself. Now we wanna leave about 20 mil out from where these actually stick out. Now these aren't gonna be all that easy to do up. I've shown you in previous videos the way that we measure these. Now different toilet designs will have different measurements, 
but the principle that we used in video number one is exactly the same. Here is a brief recap of what we do. Pop on the clamp and the retaining plastic piece so they hold the clamps in position on the toilet. Then insert our handy Allen keys that we're going to use to tighten these up in a minute. Once you've done that, you want to measure from the back of the toilet to exactly where our receiver clamps go. Making sure there's plenty of threads still inside the receiver clamp, you can now cut the thread to size, making sure you've got at least 20 millimeters of thread inside the receiver clamp, or rotate the receiver clamp up and down the thread. Again, making sure there's at least 20 millimeters of thread still inside the receiver clamp, making sure that the receiver clamp dimple lines up correctly with where our Allen key is going to be screwing in in a minute. Right, so we can do our final connection on here. Let's just pull it over here. Pull it with the hose, it's a great idea. <laughs> right, and now we can get the whole toilet installed. Just feed that back into there. Right, so we're lifting up, pushing on and in firmly. So we're now pretty much lined up on that. Also, the vitreous comes with a shock absorber that can be cut to shape to fit between the glass and the toilet pan to protect the glass Beautiful. itself. Right, those cleats have now got that in place. Man, the system is insanely good. And this is what I love about this system is we can now, I know we still need to get on our back, but the pieces we need to tighten, I can just feel here. They're right down here at the bottom. <laughs> Honestly, please let every toilet manufacturer Listen to that and go, yes, okay, we've seen Vitra do it, we're going to do it ourselves. And look, all I had to do was with that, and now we've got a really well-fixed toilet. Um, oh, I just can't say it enough how good it is. Should we try the B-Day function? Should we try the B-Day function now? Let's have a look. So, we just turn this on. There you go. I've covered in the previous two videos why this B-Day setup works with regs in the UK and it's all because of that little air gap system that we've got neatly hidden underneath the shroud for the toilet seat ensuring that we never get any backflow should the toilet waste block up and the toilet overflow. And that's it. Done. So in the last few videos I've done this a few of you have said how is that compliant with British regs, British standard regulations? And it's this air brake here that makes it compliant. So if we have a problem with uh, backflow, say this really does start coming up or it gets into the nozzle in here, there's an air brake in this that doesn't allow water to go back down into the mains. Um, and that's why they're compliant with the British standards that we have here. Um, and I think Vitch are actually good enough to comment on some of your comments about that. They were sort of on board. I would demonstrate the flush of this but we've talked about the flushes already how we can adjust them you've seen how good they are already on the rimless system of toilets and bidets so i don't think i need to really go over that again just follow the instructions nice and closely when you're doing this they're really easy to put on and they cover up the amazing little air brake to stop any backflow going through nice and easily if you ever need to get to that for any servicing it's just two little screws on each side to undo and you'll be able to take all of that shrouding off to do any work so then guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching me install these three B-Days over here at the studio. Uh, I'm looking forward to finally getting round to the fourth video where I fit one of these. I don't know which one it's going to be yet. I'm going to allow Emily and Big G to choose. I might fit one in the downstairs loo as well, like I said earlier. But an absolutely beautiful piece of equipment. Really, really good. I like the way that, I just like the way that they've thought about different applications, different places where these might want to be installed and they've come up with this surface mounting idea. Um, it's so easy just to get anything. I mean, oh, I need to get something. I can pull that off and, you know, it's there for me to get out straight away. The water, I can get in here to the flush unit and everything like that. And, you know, it's just a very, very good, simple solution. So Gadget Man 36 who's also an AL Army member, I hope that's kind of answered your questions. Now, I know it's all dark in here. It's all moody and all that sort of stuff. So if there's one thing we've got to do, of course, let's do a song and have a little dance.
So there you go, guys. The last in the Vitra B Day series that I'm doing in the studio. I will be fitting one of these in the bathroom renovation series. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. We will be returning to the bathroom renovation next Saturday in next Saturday's video. So please hit the subscribe button there. Please check out my vlog, Time to James. Also, look at our very latest video if you're watching this in the future and you want to catch up with the very latest thing from Plumber Parts. And of course, join the AL Army.